Jane Leibowitz says there will be 127,000 square feet of retail development. The Navy Street Gate will not have a traffic signal since there are lights at Sands and Nassau Streets, and the distance is too close to the 20, which you don't have to do. I read Jana asked if the Navy Street Gate will encourage pedestrian use at Nassau Street. Uh, Navy Yard representatives agree. Irene Jan also asked if there will be a crossing between retail four and retail five sections. Navy Yard representatives said there will be a crosswalk toward the interior of the space. Lincoln Restler asked about timber shed preservation. Navy Yard representatives said that they must stabilize the timber shed upon the transfer of the property to them and they believe that there is a possibility of saving the shed. But it was also pointed out that since the Navy Yard has no access to, no access to commence stabilization, there could be a collapse of the shed. The Navy Yard has requested access, but the federal government has denied the access, i.e. the 106 process. John Dew says that CB2 has been part of the 106 process and that access should have been provided. Edwina Glasgow asked what kind of light industry in industry will be in this space. Navy Yard representatives said that the industry will be similar to what is currently at the Navy Yard. Community business comprise businesses comprise 70% of the tenants and are, and are like woodworkers, high-end designers, defense department contractors, architects, capital S. Public hearing concluded at 7.25 7, p.m. Committee meeting at 7.27 p.m. Uh, Tony Abelli and Ernest Augustus moved to approve the agenda uh, Admiral Rowe, ULERP application. Carlton Gordon and Ernest Augustus moved to approve the application. Carlton Gordon clarified the motion to include all nine special permit requests. Ernest Augustus said the proposal was long awaited. John Dew remarked on delays by federal government bureaucracy. Lawrence Whiteside supported off street parking. Motion to approve granted 8 0 and 1. Tony Belli abstained. Thank you, Miss. There's much more here. No, that's enough. No, you don't That's the second Euler. Oh, oh. That's the other thing. You're going to take it separately. Right, right. Okay, I got carried away. Okay, could you repeat the motion? 800? 8001. Tony Belly abstained. Okay. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the motion made by the Landmarks and Land Use Committee? Ms. So. Janner, Mr. Harrison. Are there any comments? Any questions from executive committee members? Ms. Patel. Um, Mr. Whiteside, there's yeah. no, it's not clear. Um, there isn't actually a commitment from any supermarket to come in yet. Uh, as far no. as you know. No. Is there any still, still still no. But there have been no. several responses, they claim. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mr. Dew. Mr. Harrison. Thank you, Mr. Dew. Just a point of clarification. I'm certain if I had gone to committee, I'd know the answer to this. Um, but it would appear from the, from the nine special permits that on the one hand, there is a need to remove a need for parking. On the other one, there is a provision of parking. I'm guessing that has to do with public street parking versus a private lot? No. no. It's okay, it's I guess wrong. It's the amount of parking that All right. would be required in the, in the different uh, districts. Okay. What they've done here is they've, they've created really a special district around this area of the Navy Yard. That's the, these nine items go to coalesce and create a special one-time thing that can only happen here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Becky. Thank you. It says in this community board. Mr. Winter. No, it does. Mr. Winter. No, it doesn't. Mr. Winter. Can I show it to you? Yeah. Mr. Winter. You can look at it outside. Do not do that in here. Mr. Winter, you know our community board two works. We don't have out of 
Uh, uh, Wait a minute. You don't need to touch me. <laughs> I was just kind of amazed that for two two years we've been, or three years, <clears throat> we've been talking about this, and there's supposed Ten to be. Ten years we've been talking. No, no, but I'm talking about a food, a, a market. Yeah. Always there, and I understand. Supermarket. supermarket, and all of a sudden I hear that all these, the last two, three years of the discussion of the supermarket, and there is no definite company yet that's willing to take it. That kind of surprises me a little bit. If I, if I may. Mr. Connison, uh, they did have a developer selected, but I know that they broke the contract for a number of reasons with them. So, I, and my understanding is that it's RF, they're looking at the re other respondents from the RFP, or they may RFP it again in the future, but. I think that there, my understanding is that there was, at least from their presentations to the Economic Development and Jobs Committee, that you know there is sufficient demand for a supermarket. I know, but is there sufficient interest in putting a supermarket there? I, I understand the demand for the community. On both fronts. I'm yeah, yeah okay. and that's an important point. Uh, I guess it was four or five months ago, maybe a bit longer than that, there were some issues that came up with the developer. Uh, who had apparently uh, contracts with a number of agencies uh, throughout the city. And uh, as that contract came up, not with the Brooklyn Navy Yard, with uh, a number of discrepancies, the Brooklyn Navy Yard at that point determined that they should not continue that particular association. So the process is starting all over again. It's not that there wasn't any interest. There were four supermarkets that expressed Yes, Mr. Harris. Thank you for elucidating our colleagues on the board on that matter, John. I would only say that if you build it, they will come. Is there any other discussion? Uh, Hearing none, again, the committee did approve the application as it was presented uh, to landmarks and land use. All in favor of the committee's recommendation, please raise your hand. Opposed? Abstentions. Ms. Patel abstained. The old bank space, and they wanted okay. to get that license so they can. You ready? Okay. Uh, July, July 25th, 2011, not before the executive board public hearing and meeting at Long Island University. Do not approve the Navy Yard Development Corporation's application for zoning variances. Approve only that New York City acquire the property as soon as possible. In this way, the myriad of problems associated with Admiral Row can then be appropriately resolved. How can the zoning of Admiral's Row property be changed if it is still legally in federal hands? How can the community board two approval of the Navy Yard Development Corporation zoning variance through the zoning resolution section 74-922 be considered with the enormity of the project causes detrimental effects to the Farragut, Ingersoll, and Whitman neighborhoods. The 74,161 square foot supermarket with its vast parking requirement causes congestion in an already congested area of Brooklyn. The pollution in an area, the public housing adjacent to the site, where many children suffer from asthma and other respiratory illnesses. A grocery store of less than 10,000 square feet would suit the needs of the neighborhood much better than the city's planned megastructure, which is intended to induce regional draw. Should zoning go from M12 to M14, the proposed development would only require 266 parking spaces rather than 1,000. One of the Navy Yard Development Corporation's reasons for wanting the demolition of Admiral's Row was this vast parking requirement. This new variance includes a 70% reduction in the parking lot. Admiral's Row must now be allowed to remain. 
Congressional authorization of Public Law 100-102 allows New York City to buy Admiral's Row property at fair market value, which exceeds $200 million. The cost of the restoration of Admiral's Row and the property can be deducted from the fair market sale at no cost to the taxpayers. Admiral's Row qualifies for state and national registers of historic places and must be landmarked. A compromise between a park setting of the restored grounds and a retail commercial development would be an excellent use of the zoning variance and ULER, Uniform Land Use Review Procedure. There must be congressional review prior to Admiral's Row property title transfer. Thank you.